Hello, housemates, and welcome back to Avernum, Escape from the Pit. Last time, we almost uh, got party wiped after completing some pretty hard fights, uh, or specifically this hard fight against whatever his name was, super lizard warrior dude, and his slime pets. But he came out on top, and now let's go report our success to Commander Rosie. Oh, did we ignore this chest before? No? Uh, that's where the book was, that's right. Yeah. <clears throat> so there's nothing more here for us. Let us just get out. Hopefully we don't get ambushed on the way out like we did out of the Slith town. We did not. Let's see, was there like a, another way in here or something? Just out of curiosity. There was not. Okay. So let's go all the way back up to Fort Dranlin. No, get out, get out of the boat. Yeah, yeah. Commander Rosie. <clears throat> Look, I found some slith plans. Here they are. The commander eagerly grabs the plans. Excellent, you've done a great service for us here. It almost makes me wish I could reward you properly. All I can give you is this. She takes a delicate silver ring out of her pocket. We found this on a Slith Raider. It might be worth something if you want to have it. I wish we could give you more. She then turns to the plans and starts to study them. Well, there's gratitude for you. Mage Stone Band might be good. Plus 4% magical damage, yeah. What are you wearing? I don't mean that to be a dirty sounding question. You're not wearing a ring? Oh, I like it, so I'm gonna put a ring on it. Okay, so, um, I guess we have other things we can do. Let's see here. Um, the Slith Menace. Okay, so we could probably do this now. Uh, island southwest of Kotra. So let's go back down that way. Yeah, okay. How many times do you have to see me? You don't need to tell me every time. Um, sure, let's see what they've got. Um, they're exorbitant prices, so no. Thanks. Wait, is that the same island? South, west. Is there another island out here? Let's go see what happens when we talk to the mayor. See if we've completed this quest. No, I don't want to look at the desk. Mayor. Mayor Steele is appropriately impressed by your victory against the Slith Zerakai. Well done. We lack the forces to carry out such an assault. You were rewarded with a pouch of coins and a fine breastplate. A fibrous breastplate. You lack the forces. We were four people, dude. Come on. I know we're good, but uh, we're not that good. Fibrous bless breastplate. Let's see. Energy resistance, hostile effect resistance really low on the chance to hit. So, um, um, let's have her wear this, I think. Okay. Job board? No. All right, so that's another quest down. We're getting to the point where we're gonna have to, you know, go to the castle finally. What else do we have? Um, yeah, these are, none of these are really, except for the castle, none of these are story quests. Um, 
There is, of course, Barga is, yeah, a long way away. Uh, we're not going to be able to deal with that right now. So uh, let's find our way onto the main road south. We're going to head to the castle region. So we're going to go into an entirely unexplored area. There's a whole bunch of stuff that we can still explore around here. Um, but I want to get into some of the other big quests first. <clears throat> You leave the Eastern Gallery and travel down the road towards Southern Avernum. Almost immediately, the air grows colder. Guards and travelers on the roads are fewer and farther between. Supposedly, the largest Aver uh, settlements in Avernum are to the south, but the pathway there is a dangerous one. Okay. 40 miles. Ooh, wow, that's, that is quite a long way away. So let's see what else we can find. This sign has been clawed beyond readability. Hmm. Hello? Claw beasts? There's a cache. An emerald? Okay. Where are the claw beasts? Where even are we? The Mertis area. Oh, undead claw beasts. Hmm, undead are pretty nasty. Let's, let's save. Hello? Okay, ghouls and shades. These shouldn't be too bad. Uh, let's go for the ghoul. Oh yeah, down like a chump. Ghouls, I think both ghouls and ghasts can slow you, so um, let's not let that happen. Cold damage is not going to help us, so that's one thing to remember. We don't have an AoE that's useful against undead. Oh yeah, these guys are sucker chumps. Let's, uh, oh wait, we just did that, I can't do that right now. Okay, let's switch. Um, mm-hmm. Nice. Remember, we took an uh, elemental specialist on her, so uh, her elemental damage was boosted, which is good stuff. Now, these guys cannot hit us for shit. It's, it's great to be on the other side of that for once. Nice. I don't think they dropped anything. Nope. Right, let's see what this place is. Spiral pit. Oh, I know what this place is. Uh, okay. This tunnel slopes sharply downward, spiraling deeper into the earth. As you enter, you notice that the air is getting very cold. The muggy, sulfurous atmosphere of most of Vernum is soon forgotten. The cold is far too sharp and sudden to be natural. You would be inclined to guess that there was evil magic in this place, even if you couldn't hear the snarls and hisses of foul creatures farther inside. This tunnel smells of death and decay, and the shadows seem to close in and envelop you. This is a dark place, haunted and cursed. Okay, the spiral crypt. I remember now that Murtis is near that. Uh, I don't want to deal with that right now. I remember it's pretty unpleasant. Uh, and I think we get quests from Murtis to deal with it, so we'll wait until we get a hold of those. A giant natural spring bubbles out of the ground not far ahead, feeding the large lake. From here, you can just make out a village of stone huts on the eastern shore. This is clearly a fertile area. Large, yummy-looking mushrooms grow all over the place, grazed upon by pallid cave cows. Large, pale fish frolic in the lake. Never heard of fish frolicking. Yet, the air has an unusual chill to it, and strange, inhuman howls echo at you through the shadows. Though this was once a pleasant and fertile area, all is not well here now. Also, there's like... Okay, well, there's some undead wandering around. That'll do it. 
This partially defaced sign says warning undead infestation to the northeast. Hey, come here. You see a group of horrible undead creatures. They're wandering along the paths around Myrtis, seemingly looking for prey. They are slow and clumsy and seem somewhat confused. You could evade them easily, but then they could continue to wander and do harm. Or you could attack them and try to rid Myrtis of this menace. Attack. Okay, there's one that's nastier. Aghast. Let's keep him in place for the time being. Yeah, they do slow if they actually hit you. Okay. We'll be able to deal with these without too much trouble. I wish I had a fire AoE. I mean, cleaving will help you. He is quite a bit tougher, but now he's dead. Doesn't matter. Right, and they are dead. You have slain the undead wandering around the Myrtis farms. Though this was, no doubt, a very helpful deed, you fear that there are sure to be more undead on the way. Alright, also, these dudes, what I was going to say earlier is they're not helpful. There is a way past that wall and we have to talk to you jerks. Alright. Uh, all are welcome. Oh, hello. Ether? Your name is Ether? Okay. You meet a distinguished woman in long, flowing robes. She wears a wooden ankh and tends to this large, remote shrine. She introduces herself when you approach. I am Ether of the Church of the All-Knowing Goodness. I welcome you to this island of peace, tranquility, and non-judgment. May the beneficial spirits watch you all your days. Uh, tell me more about the Church of the All-Knowing Goodness. What a name. Ah, there is so much to tell. About the natural march towards justice, the need for kindness toward all living things, the spirits that surround us, watching and judging us, and urging us towards justice. There is so much to learn, and, as you can imagine, it has led us to be hated by the Empire. Um, why? Because there is nothing the Empire hates more than talk of kindness and justice. Emperor Hawthorne sees to that. Uh, I have another question. I am pleased that the beneficial spirits have seen fit to give you more time with me. Are you well? Um, can you help me? Yes, my child. I serve this village as best I can. I provide much more than healing and should, uh, much more healing than I should have to. I have helped fight the undead on occasion as well. I wish I could rely on my good works more and my spells less. What do you know about the undead threat? They appear in the spiral pit and come out to raise havoc. We really don't know what makes them appear. They aren't a terrible threat anymore, but once they were a horror to behold. Uh, tell me, how much do you know about this village? Only that it is the only settlement between the northern cities and the Great Cave. She corrects herself. No. Nope. The Tower of Magi is to the south, but uh, they set themselves apart. The Tower of Magi? That sounds interesting. Tell me about it. I don't know much. All of the most skilled enchanters and priests in Averthem either live there or go there at some point. But they're very secretive. I'm sure they would see adventurers like you, though. How do I get to the Tower of Magi? Head south and read the signs. It's hard to miss. All right. Um, do you know any holy rituals, priestess? Yes, I am a spellcaster of small skill. I would love to teach you some of them, but I can't. You would have much better luck in the Tower of Magi to the south. She smiles sadly. My above ground magical training was limited, I'm afraid. <sighs> I was nobility, you see. 
Uh, I would be still, but a minor power struggle landed me here. Uh, power struggle? Tell me more. You know, it has been so long that I honestly can't remember the details. Just nobles on the surface jostling for advancement in the eyes of Emperor Hawthorne. Cruel wretch that he is. Uh, okay. Healing? Um, do you make potions? Sometimes. I do know a few secrets. I don't usually give them away, though, she thinks. Actually, you could be of use to me. I need some energetic herbs. Bring them to me, and I will pay you for the trouble. I have another question. Also, I have some energetic herbs. Are you still looking for potion ingredients? She takes the energetic herbs and gives you a potion in return. Thank you for your help. Now, I could also use some spiritual herbs. I'm going to say herbs because she's being all British. Some spiritual herbs. Uh, bring me some new specimens and I will reward you. Are you still looking for potion ingredients? She takes the spiritual herbs and gives you a scroll. Thank you for your help. Now, I could also use some grey mold. Bring me a nice bunch and I will reward you. All right. Right now, I'm looking for some grey mold. Alas, it looks like you don't have any. It's hard stuff to find, though. Don't give up. Okay, I thought we did have some of that, but we don't. Um, blah, 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 blah. All right, good day. And to you, may the spirits watch and guide you in these hard days ahead. Got some XP and a little bit of stuff for that. Who wants to give me the task of killing some undead? I'll take it. Guard William. A mage sits in the corner, working out equations on a sheet of papyrus. As he works, he sips dark tea and occasionally mutters curses under his breath. When you try to speak with him, he tries to be polite, though clearly he doesn't appreciate the interruption. I'm William, sage and researcher. Looking for information, traveler? What are you writing? He says nothing. You sense he is less than pleased with your presence. Uh, I guess you're not in the mood to talk? He sighs. <sighs> I am developing new magical formula. Very complicated. And probably all wrong. Stupidly wrong. Um, can you teach me magic? The question irks him. I'm going from the Tower of Magi to Formello. Those two, la two locations are great places to learn magic of all sorts. Me, I'm just a sage. I'd like to be left alone. Excuse me. All right, fair enough. Soldier, gypsy. You see a stout, striking woman sitting at the bar. She's carrying, amazingly enough, a guitar. She looks at you as if you're nothing special. She seems to be taking a break between sets. She says, I'm gypsy. Always try to talk to other travelers. Never know what you might learn. Can, can you play that guitar? She doesn't say anything. She simply starts playing. A truly stunning torrent of songs pour f forth from her guitar. Then she pats it lovingly and looks back up at you. Nice sound. How did you manage to find a guitar around here? She seems pleased you notice. I made it. Only instrument of its kind down here. Took me a year. Would have been worth ten years. Now I'm a minstrel. Um, what do you do? I travel from town to town playing for folks. That's not hard. Uh, as there aren't many, too many of them. I'm on my way to play for Motrex right now. That'll be a first. Tell me about Motrex. He's a dragon. He lives to the north. Far to the north. And he likes humans. I'm looking to see what he would give someone who showed him what a human music was like. Plus, I've never played for a dragon before. I bet nobody has. It would be a first. You know, I hear a dragon lives in the honeycomb. But I prefer an audience I know is friendly. Another dragon, huh? Know anything about it? Legend tells that its name is Athron, one of the five dragons of Avernum, and it doesn't like visitors. <laughs> That's all I know. The honeycomb? What's that? It's a maze of twisting passages all alike to the west. Uh, be careful in there. Many have gotten lost in there. A lot of them never came back out. Just moving on. Well, pull up a chair and hear a song first. My next set is about to begin. She launches into a set of songs about the Empire. None of them are flattering, and many of them refer to Emperor Hawthorne in insulting and obscene terms. You listen for a while, and then slip away. So we've been to the honeycomb, and we have heard 
about how Atheron is the most powerful of the dragons. Uh, all of this we learned from Motrex. You see the bartender. He's hard at work cleaning the already spotless countertop. He maintains a very comfortable and pleasant inn, which seems more than good enough for the rough merchants who frequent it. Welcome, he says to you. I'm Mark. Take a seat. Look over our wares. I'll be over to help you when you're ready. Um, I killed a bunch of undead on the road outside. Do you know anything about that? Thanks for helping, but alas, they will be replaced. There's some sort of curse on this area. Evil undead keep appearing. I don't know why. Undead curse, huh? Any guessing about what's causing it? Look, I run the hotels, though someone passing through said he saw a bunch of skeletons walking out of a cave to the northeast. Um, I'd like to know more. Then talk to Elmer. He's our mayor. Usually found in the auction hall in the west end of town. Oops. Excuse me. He hurries off to tend to another task. I don't know what that oops is about. Is he not supposed to tell me where the dude was? Anyone in these rooms? Um, what's on the floor? Hey, hey, it looks like there's something on the floor. What is it? No? Fine. That seems to be worth stealing. Alchemical equipment. Interesting. Let's go find this Elmer character. Merchant, merchant, guard, merchant, guard, guard. Mertis Market, all welcome. Terry, Matt, and Tina. A small blonde woman works in the north half of this trading post, which is cluttered with a wide variety of mixed wares. She favors you with a broad smile. Welcome to Terry's fine supplies. We have a little of something for everyone. Uh, what sort of things do you sell? I sell farm supplies mostly, but I sell stuff to merchant caravans too. Weapons. The occasional beneficial brew. Might you be interested in purchasing something? What do the caravans bring? They haul shrooms and preserved meat to the Great Cave. They need a lot of supplies over there. Luckily, the lizards here are big and strong enough to pull a wagon. Business has been good. Food's cheap here. If you need to buy rations, let me know. Those giant lizards? Those fierce things? They help you? Yeah, when you declaw them, and defang them. Plus, a liberal hand with a whip. But mostly, never forget they're nasty and violent creatures, and that they hate you. Um, sell some stuff. Alright. I don't need that anymore. Um, these wands really aren't that helpful. Shields, garbage. Sneering wand might still be good. Purging crystal might still be worth it. Terror wands might be worth it. Lots of money soon. Piercing crystals will keep just in case. Fiery wands, not worth it. Keep that wine. Alright, we're rich. Uh, I'll buy some stuff. What do you got? Uh, no, none of that is helpful. She said they were cheap. Those prices were exorbitant. You see a beautiful woman with long, brown hair. She's pregnant. Quite pregnant. Her rough, homespun clothes have been expanded several times, and her pale skin is flushed with the effort of moving around. She says, Welcome to my half of the market. I'm Tina, and my blades will keep you safe from the zombies on the roads. Um, I'd like to have a peek at the weapons you're selling. No, wait, tell me about your wares. I run this half of the market with my husband, Matt. 
Uh, you can purchase armor from him and weapons from me. I recommend our fine spears. They'll keep the zombies well away. Were you and Matt thrown into Avernum together? No. He was already living here when I arrived. I was lost and confused, and he helped me out. Well, and one thing led to another, and, <laughs> well, then to another. She looks down at her bulging stomach. Life must continue, after all, even down here. Zombies? Where? Plenty of those outside town. They just appear and come out of the west. They used to attack the farms, but we got good at butchering them. Now they stay away unless we leave town. Then they mob us. She sighs and starts polishing a spear. Um, let me take a peek at the weapons. Um, garbage. And exorbitantly priced. All right, Matt. You see a tall, awkward, brown-haired man. He's spending half his time polishing a shield and the other half running to help the woman in the booth across the hall. Once he's settled down, he indicates his armor and other accessories with a grand sweep of his arms. Matt's fine armor. Can I help you? Um, what kind of stuff can I buy from you? He holds up a shield. I only buy and sell armor. Lots of demand, what with the undead running around. Undead coming from where? We call it the Spiral Pit. The skeletons don't attack the towns and farms much, thank goodness, but anyone leaving town is fair game. Do you know the woman in the next booth? I already know the answer to this question. A broad smile appears on his face. I should say so. She's my wife. We're expecting. Well, she is. That's why I'm always going to help her out, whether she needs it or not. Okay, purchase armor. Nope. Later jumps. Okay, what is here? Merchants are uninteresting. There's Elmer. This tall, wrinkled old man is carrying around a sheaf of fragile papyrus sheets. He wears a sash over his tattered clothes. The sash is pale and frayed at the edges, but its faint purple hue is still visible. He nods to you. Adventurer, welcome to Mertis. I am Elmer. You're welcome here, so long as you don't cause trouble. Um, do you work here? Yes. When I'm not bothered with mayor business, I run this auction house. He holds up a sheaf of papers. What is auctioned off? Livestock, mainly, from the farmers hereabouts. Cave cows and lizards. Take a look at the pens. Lots of good livestock. What happens to them? Well, the farmers around here raise their cattle and lizards. Then they bring them here to be sold and taken north and west. Good work all around. Um, we killed some undead who were wandering around right outside. Can we get a reward? We're very thankful for your good deeds outside of city walls. Alas, we are not a wealthy village. For killing that particular group, we can only give you our profound and heartfelt thanks. Um, what's the sash for? It means I'm the mayor. That's what it means. Meredith isn't big enough town to get me a seat on the council, but I still have my share of responsibilities. Such as I hire adventurers and have the funds to pay hunters to help us with our problems. Well, tell me about the council. It's the mayors of the six largest cities in Avernum and King Micah alongside. They make all the major decisions for Avernum. I'm not on the council. They say Murtis isn't important enough. I have words with them about that every chance I get. Uh, how can I help you? Well, you may have heard that this town has been bothered by wandering undead for some time now. We aren't sure what's causing them to appear, though we have an idea where they're from. If you can stop them, we'll pay you a bounty. Tell me more. These caves have always been haunted, since the days of the first expedition and before. Always lots of shadows. Always have to burn our dead to keep them from twitching around and upsetting everyone in their way. But it's been worse lately. The dead walk in the spiral pit. They come out and cause all sorts of trouble. That's what we need to deal with. Uh, the spiral pit? Northeast of here. Thoroughly haunted, though it's always kept to itself until now. We've kept our distance, but that may well have to change. If you want to help us break the curse, that's the place to look. Uh, why do you stay here? This is good land, apart from the walking horrors. Have you seen any place in Avernum that's all safe and comfortable? If you ever do, tell me about it, and I'll go. You have to admit, he has a point. Alright, thanks, that's all for now. So we now have a quest. 
these, uh, um, blah, this open area is filled with giant lizards, all of them chained to, lar chained to large rocks on the ground. They'd all been declawed and defanged. They're waiting here to be hitched up to stone sleds by the merchants who own them. Traders run everywhere, loading and unloading goods, and trying to avoid getting chewed on by the lizards. They're a pale, rough, scarred lot, battle-hardened by many trips back and forth across the Vernum. Okay. These just like... This is a silo. It's filled with dried mushrooms, sacks of mushroom flour, edible lichen, lichen, and a host of other fungoid products. Everything shows signs of being nibbled on by rats. It's all very unappealing, but it's what sustains life in Avernum, so you'll have to deal with it. Well, speaking of rats... As a payment for my rat killing services, who are you? Town woman. Really? This is the inn's kitchen. It is clean, well equipped, rodent free, and filled with mouth watering things. This inn is one of the most comforting places you found anywhere in Avernum. She doesn't respond. Alright, so I guess we'll make our way back to the spiral pit. Let's see what these guys have to say. The gate leading to the village of Myrtis is blocked by several large, well-armed guards. They stop you. Hold on there, friends, one of them says. We have to be careful about strangers around here. You'll have to tell us your names before you can pass. Come on, we don't have all day. Well, sure. You tell them your name. Thank you for cooperating. We need to keep track of who is going where. They step off the path. One more warning. Murtis has been troubled by undead for the last few months. Be wary. We don't know where the evil creatures come from, but they're quite dangerous. People do seem to know where they come from, dude. That's why they're sending me to go, you know, check it out. Alright, not all the undead will be as easy as the ones we've dealt with so far. Let's get going. Let the festivities commence. Skeleton. Skeletons are chumps. How did you miss? Javelin. Alright, I guess we'll end combat. Probably want to watch out for, like, trapdoors. More skeletons. Uh, not trap door, it's a secret door, that's what I meant. Seriously, you can't hit these lame skeletons. Are you so terrible at your job? That's more like it. Gonna be popping in and out of combat a lot, I figure. Let's see, is this any good? No. Let's 
this, uh... I'm gonna kill this stuff before this does do anything unpleasant to me. The burning fungus can be very unpleasant. <laughs> Sounds like a jockey commercial. I'm just gonna have to take a shot from one. Undead and burning fungus living together. How sweet. some more of this stuff. Well, there's something right there. It is indeed burning fungus. Let's see how you like this. Can you see it? takes its revenge. Okay. Eventful so far. Okay, now we're getting to something. Zombies. Lots of zombies. <laughs> Critical hit for four damage. <laughs> Can we get anything out of this? Gold ring? Clearly, looting it will nothing bad will happen. Nothing bad ever happens when you loot. Alright. Okay. There's a secret door. I don't remember how the, the Spiral Crypt features in a number of different Avernum games. I don't remember exactly how it goes, what the deal is. I think we need to go in this way, otherwise it'll just be a random garbage. There's a pool. Um, maybe we'll go around the outside first. Sage? What? That doesn't make any sense. Emerald, take that. Woven gold chain. Alright, let's continue on the outside first. Some crystals. Crystals are involved in all sorts of nonsense in this game. They're like the reason for for all sorts of grossness. Greater shade. You we can deal with. 
pretty easily. But, I mean, you can't reach the target. So another secret door here. Some crystals on the ground. Barriers, we can dispel that shit. Let's move to some of that. Um, what kind of damage is this? Cold, yeah, so it definitely doesn't help. Um, spirit stuff. Yeah. Um, I'll just shoot you. All right, let's have the inaugural use of dispel barrier. Power Lash. Alright, what's this do? There is a large cave wood wheel here, with a long length of iron chain wrapped around it several times. The chain then goes from the wheel to a hole in the ground. Well, turn the wheel. You hear the sound of scone scraping on stone. Alright, I don't know where that opens something up. Probably gonna, we probably have let forth some horrible flood of undead. It's gonna come punch us in the face. Alright. Okay. We've got friends. Okay, you, you missed. Let's go ahead and use this now. And clear out a ghoul or two. Or just one, that's fine too. Put a um, prophylactic hate, because we do have to load by these dudes. Sorry, didn't really work. Dead ghoulies. There are different options here. All right, well that's a dead end. Suddenly, everything goes black. Even the tiny bits of light you have been able to summon flicker out in an instant. Interesting. Of course, you know, the undead don't care about that. Yes. Right, 
You can still see there's another critter down there. Yep. Being a jerk. Okay, interesting. So the lights have gone out. Um, it made it sound like even if we turned into a lantern, it wouldn't do anything. That is correct. So now it's just much brighter in the immediate area around us than it used to be. Oh, it also took out our mini-map. So we can't really tell where we've already gone. It's a bit irritating. wandering around here for quite some time. Alright, here's a dead body. Oop, there's a shade behind us. A shimmering sentinel. Alright, let's uh, do something about him. He summoned a rabid hellhound. Well, that was nice. Well, that was unpleasant. Is it a spirit? Apparently. Okay, he's gone. Or it's gone. Okay, those things are dead. Dropped spectral gloves. Okay, take them. Some mushrooms. There's a pool. There's a group heel skull on the ground. And a skeleton around it. Didn't work for whoever that was. Not even those crystal spires are giving off any light. They would appear to be. All right, a wit. that fire spell because it does decent damage and it takes practically zero mana. Right. Yeah, I thought there might be another one lurking. Anything else in here? Okay. Another wheel. Two wheels turned. 
know if that's done us any good. Secret door. Can I get the lights back? Please. Stalking wit. Take a couple of good shots at him. Oh, that was dumb of him. Another stalking wit. Here's some more shuffling feet. Ooh, right behind me. Greater shade. Not so great. Okay, the ground. No. Another greater shade has come to play. Another stalking wit. pretty hard. Seriously. Ow. Okay, I can hear more lurking about somewhere. Stop cleaving, you jerk. Where am I? Another secret door. Another shade behind us. God damn it. You know what I want you to do, Pathfinder. Why are you being a jerk? door. Here it is. Did I press this button already? What did that even open? Damn it. I can't tell what that did. Secret door-ish. Okay, this looks promising. Hello. <clears throat> As you maneuver carefully past this pit, a white mist starts to rise from the floor of the caverns ahead and behind you. You can sense something sliding silently closer, bringing with it a painful chill in the air. All right. The ghast. I don't think that's what's doing the painful chill. We've dealt with these dudes before. Um. Okay, I got 
charm. Oh, fuck you. Oh, no. How long is that going to last? Oh, we're so toast. All right. We auto-saved a little bit. We're going to load that up, and then we're going to cut this episode off. Uh, and we'll see what we can do with this nasty pit in the next episode. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. Uh, we'll see what the mystery is next time around. So please hit the thumbs up button, and if you want to see the mystery resolved, please subscribe to my channel. Of course, if you're not going to do either of those things, then I don't care what you do.